Hi world watchers and welcome back to my kitchen and I apologize now for the state of it because it's a bit of a mess and it is a bit of a mess because today is Sunday and today I am doing a roast dinner for tea. I always do it for tea, we never ever eat at lunchtime. Um, and I was going to do a cauliflower and broccoli cheese to go with our roast chicken. And I thought, I know it's a simple recipe, but maybe you might quite like to see the way that I do mine. So that's what I'm gonna do. So to start off with, I have got a large cauliflower, which I've cut into florets. Now the thing with this, for me anyway, the way I do it is I leave the florets as big as they can be, because I'm gonna um, obviously parboil this, and I don't want diddy little bits like this because this will go to mush and this will hold its shape. And obviously I want it to hold its shape. I don't want it to be a, a, just a mushy, cheesy mush. Um, I'm doing a large cauliflower and I'm doing a two heads of broccoli. And the reason I'm doing that is because my son absolutely loves his veg, but he doesn't like cheese. So I'm gonna make a cauliflower and broccoli cheese for John and I. And then I'm gonna do just some ordinary broccoli and cauliflower for him. So everybody's happy. Now, again, I'm doing a large portion and that is because I will use what we need today and then there will be leftovers and the leftovers we can either have tomorrow if we want them or I quite often put portions into, um, you know, like the plastic takeaway dishes, or you can get the foil ones in the supermarket, which you can just put the lids on, and it freezes really well. So if you wanna make a batch like this, then you will have some for later on, the next day, or in the freezer for whenever you need it. If you have it in the freezer, all you need to do is take it out on the morning that you're gonna require it, let it defrost, and then just reheat it. Absolutely fine, not a problem at all. So the other thing with it is obviously we don't want to cook it completely through because it's gonna carry on cooking when we put it in the oven. So I've chopped up my stuff. I'm gonna go and get that on the boil and then I'll come back and show you what I do with my sauce. So, see you in a minute. Okay, so I've cooked me cauliflower and broccoli and put it into my Pyrex dish as such. Now, like I said, don't cook it all the way because you want it to hold its shape when you put it in the oven. So that's ready. I've just got a little bit more cauliflower finishing cooking because that's for sun number one. Anyway, so now we're gonna do the cheese sauce. Now this is a, what I would call a proper cheese sauce because it's not out of the packet, okay? I will write the recipe, uh, the ingredients down and John will put it underneath, but you will have to, well, I'll try and make it readable. I, my writing's not that bad, but anyway. So the first thing is 500 mils of milk. The better the milk, the creamier the sauce. So I generally use skimmed milk for our tea and all that sort of stuff. If I'm making a cheese sauce, I try to buy full fat, although I forgot today, but this is semi, so that's absolutely fine. You're gonna to need to put this into the microwave to get it a little bit warm, okay? It doesn't need to be boiling or hot, but it does need to be warm because when you start adding it into your sauce, you don't wanna keep reducing the temperature of your sauce and then having to reheat, 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 okay? So I'm just gonna bung this in the microwave for a minute or so. Now, while that's getting warm, this sauce is gonna have two types of cheese in it. It's got, this is a strong cheddar, and this is double Gloucester. Now the thing with cheese sauces is the more cheese you put in, obviously the better it is, and you want something with a bit of taste. I didn't have quite enough double Gloucester, so I've just topped up with um, cheddar. If you don't have double Gloucester or you don't like it, you can just stick with cheddar. You just use what you like, okay? So, start off with you're going to need 50 grams of butter we're not going low fat here and you need to melt that 
but you don't want to melt it too quickly you don't want to burn it you definitely do not want brown butter okay so just melt it quite slowly yeah nice warm milk right the butter is melted and to that I'm going to add 70 grams of plain flour the whole lot goes straight in and mix it now this is going to come to like a gloopy paste which if you don't already know is technically called a roux and a roux is a good thing to learn how to do because it's the sort of thing that a lot of basic sauces start with so if you're going to do like an onion sauce or something like that again a roux uh, just a plain white sauce so you don't add any cheese to it that would be good so you need to learn really or if you can get a roux down then it's nothing to be scared of people see it and think oh god that's hard or that's going to be a lot of work and it's really not the key thing about making a roux is allowing it time because the flour is what thickens your sauce the butter obviously gives you flavor but what you don't want is the flavor of the flour so if you cook it for a few minutes you cook out that floury taste and that's the important thing because it's got butter in you'll hear it sort of sizzling slightly but what you do not want with your paste is um I don't like this. what you don't want is to get any color onto your paste we're not browning it or anything we are just cooking it through so keep moving it around it doesn't matter if it's in bits like mine I'll bring it to you so you can see looks like that you see or if it forms a lump it doesn't matter either way just give it a couple of minutes to cook down to be fair if you don't have a big lump it's probably easier because in a second we're going to start adding milk and we're going to add it a little bit at a time and beat it well in between so that we don't get any lumps because the, the last thing you want is a lumpy sauce okay so here we go little bits at a time milk and beat it now to start off with it's going to get into even a more gloopy mess but keep it moving don't let it burn once your milk's gone in, add a little bit more. It's actually really easy to do with a wooden spoon, but if you do struggle with a wooden spoon, or you think you're getting lumps, then you can use a balloon whisk. But it just takes a little bit of patience. I'm going to show you what it looks like this is after I've added three little bits of milk okay so it looks like a gloopy mess now I hope you can see this I'm not sure of the light so next lot goes in stir it slowly to start it mixing otherwise it splashes everywhere and then increase it to a good beat kind of like porridge I guess in a way you 
this is why we warm our milk because what we don't want is every time we add it for the heat to come out of the pan now I'm doing this on a number two on my electric hob so you can see that it's quite a low heat we don't want it too hot because that's when it burns and gets lumpy and goes horrible If you do find that it is cooking too fast and it is starting to catch on the bottom, either turn down the heat or if you're on electric, because it's not instant, you can just remove it from the heat for a little while and let it cool a little bit. Now that's a lovely, glossy, it's still spoonable sauce okay so what you need to do now is just literally let it cook for two minutes that's all I'm gonna set my timer two minutes keep stirring it you don't have to beat it just keep it moving so that it doesn't catch and again this is just to double make sure that you've cooked out the taste of the flour Now, if you think that that sauce is a bit thick for you, you can always add a touch more milk. It really is a personal choice. The other thing is, is that we're gonna add quite a lot of cheese to it. So the cheese is going to melt into it. And obviously cheese contains fat or oil. So that may make it a little bit more looser. There we go. Done. So now you are going to add your cheese. So what I'm going to do is add most of the cheddar. And most of the double glosser. But just save a handful to go over the top. Mix this in well so that it melts down. Now, I actually think that this is just a tad too thick for me, so I'm just gonna get some more milk. I know that this isn't hot, but the sauce is so hot at the minute that it won't make much difference. I'm just gonna have, add probably like a splash as if you were gonna add milk to your tea. slowly mix it to start with and then beat it in that's better because obviously this is going to go over the cauliflower and broccoli so you want it to sort of pour a bit you don't want it too thick if you're going to do it in like macaroni cheese or something along those lines then yeah a little bit thicker is probably the way to go but for a cauli cheese we're sort of at that texture so a good sort of pour in and as you can see it's completely smooth so take that off of there now. get rid of this thing so here is our poly and broccoli now we're just going to pour over can see there's a nice lot of sauce so it's going to seep into the underneath bits and then on top of that I'm just going to use the tiny little bit of cheese that I've got left just to sprinkle over to give sort of a crummy effect if you like and a nice little bit of double Gloucester like that and that 
ladies and gents one it's cauliflower and broccoli cheese now that will go into the oven it's about 160 for about 25 minutes um, obviously keep an eye on it it's obviously all pretty much cooked you just want it to mel meld together and the brown, the top to brown off a bit so keep an eye on your oven keep an eye on your dish and jobs are good done so i will take a picture of mine when it's completed later and put it at the end of this video hope you've enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up if you did um, subscribe if you haven't that'd be really ace if you have thanks very much and do hit your notification bell so that you know when i'm around okay have a great sunday i need to get the oven on now for the chicken and i will see you all again really soon bye for now